And I want to clear the air and say that, for the record, I am a zoophile. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? The following video is going to contain some of the most disturbing content I have ever talked about on my channel. I'd argue probably more than any video I've ever done. I will delve into some very dark topics in detail, and it is certainly not for the faint of heart. So proceed with caution. Thank you. The internet opens up the opportunity for a lot of different communities to converge online. It's a place where unorthodox people from unorthodox backgrounds can use technology to form their own little corner of the world. Sounds innocent. Unfortunately, this also includes groups who rally around justifying some very disgusting acts and beliefs. And in extreme cases, some people online go beyond basic disgust to be genuinely morally reprehensible. For most of those involved, the furry community has become a way to indulge in a relatively innocent hobby. However, some among their ranks have expressed a genuine sexual attraction to the very animals that the entire fandom revolves around. Meet hypnotist Sappho, someone whose name has become very well known on sites like TikTok and YouTube for their outspoken beliefs on this topic. So I'm pretty sure that most furries who have seen any video about this hypnotist to Sappho person know what has been going on. Sappho's YouTube videos throughout 2021 featured VR chat hypnosis, during which she would mock hypnosis practices within the realm of a 3D simulation. Her channel went relatively unnoticed until an upload from September 2021, titled Coming Out About Things. At almost 40 minutes in length, this video is her coming out about her sexual attraction to dogs. Even beyond a simple confession, she also attempted to justify the abuse of animals. I, I'm just not going to give the opportunity for a Sappho exposed kind of video. And I would rather suck the air out of the sails of the Ransonas and instead of letting this sort of thing build, just be open and honest ab about myself and my beliefs. I am a zoophile. You did not mishear that. I am a zoophile. I do not have a thing for humans. I am more attracted to dogs like German Shepherds. Zoophiles are among the most caring and loving people towards animals and their mates. This quickly got a lot of attention, having racked up 700,000 views and counting. And as sad as the following statement is, the idea that someone would defend such a thing is not unheard of online. Many, many such cases exist. But for someone to be so open about it was truly baffling. No one even had to expose her. She did it herself. Following its release, YouTubers, forum users, and fellow members of the furry community began combing through her past and present, discovering that her personal confession was merely the tip of a massive iceberg. Almost all of the information in this video was compiled by users on Kiwi Farms, in one of the site's best threads to date, giving a very detailed history on her sordid past. Full credit goes to their extra helpings of internet autism. Seriously, their work gathering and compiling this information cannot be praised enough here. My video would not be nearly as comprehensive if not for the accessibility of that thread. So without further ado, let's find out just how depraved the internet's latest dog fucker truly is. On the surface, the only egregious thing on Sappho's channel is her video where she comes out as a proud zoophile. But upon watching her uploads and digging into her activity on other sites during their release, it quickly became apparent that her behavior in these videos is reflective of some much darker tendencies. In the summer of 2021, Sappho began spending a lot of time on VR chat, practicing her own unofficial version of hypnosis on a number of players in game while donning furry avatars. While it's not necessarily apparent in some of these videos, this hypnosis is actually one of her many kinks. What we see on her channel is simply a very tame, safe-for-work version of this. Through messages from users who were involved, we can see them commenting on the fact that her enjoyment seems to go above that of a mock hypnotist. Later messages and public comments have her claiming that she's not actually interested in it as some kind of fetish play. But given some audio released of her encounters during this time, it's pretty clear that she was getting off to it. And, as with pretty much all degenerate behavior online, most of this was also occurring via conversations on Discord. 
Sappho would join furry servers on VR chat, such as Furry Talk and Chill, where she would attempt to meet as many people as possible, who she could then add on Discord and engage in roleplay with at a later date. One of these people was a fellow furry who went by the username Grey, the catch here being that Grey was just 16 years old while Sappho was 21. She got in contact with Grey over Discord, and their conversations became intimate. Once these became unsatisfactory, the two called in VR chat to simulate the same acts. Later on, Grey came to the realization of how disgusting everything they had been engaging in was. Given the five-year age gap between the two, word spread in Sappho's community as well as with many people she had been interacting with on all of these VR chat servers. Once the admins were made aware that she had met a miter on the platform and then lured them to private messages to sext them, they swiftly took action and banned her. Things ended between Grey and Sappho as they ceased conversations. She was permanently banned from the VR chat community, even kicked from the official Discord, but no one really knew who she was. She hadn't faced any actual repercussions for her actions outside of a few server bans. This would bring her to a crossroads. Clearly, she was receiving some backlash for her behavior, but at this point, her actions had not earned her infamy. She could cease these conversations with strangers online or continue them. The video was not over yet, so you all know what happened. Now banned from her primary venue for meeting prospective role players, Sappho decided to create her own community for meeting fellow furries. Called Mama Sappho's Hypnotherapy Server, it was advertised as a place to meet new people, although much of the conversations there came down to just roleplay. Curiously, despite the very sexual nature of the server, the age requirement to join was merely 13 and up. Sappho's defense for this at the time was that the NSFW channels were only made available for those 18 years of age and up. She even claims to be requesting ID for those who claims to be 18 in order to give them access to the those channels. Despite this, a 17-year-old moderator would end up having access anyway, clearly not only breaking her own server rules, but also Discord TOS. While all of this happened closer to the middle of the year, it was partially documented in a YouTube video from a user named Joe Kuhn. Notice as well that Blue is able to talk in the NSFW chats. Moderation powers are given to a miner in a server that has NSFW content. We also have a screenshotted interaction with Blue and Sappho in her server that is highly questionable in nature, where we see Sappho sharing a photo of a censored dildo. A dog penis-shaped dildo. Having seen the video, Sappho decided to leave a comment down below responding, which feels kind of weird. Many of these receipts are either insane speculation, forged, or hearsay. I still don't see hard evidence to back any claims made, and the fact a 17-year-old Canadian who had head moderator privileges got access to those chats is a yawn at best. Also, no not-safe-for-work zoo content has ever been present on that server, unless you stretch the meaning of feral, furry artwork. Instead of outright denying some of the more damning claims within the video, Sappho decides to simply allege that there's no proof before downplaying what was evident from the screenshots. This brings us to September, just a week before the video that got so many eyes on Sappho was posted. She created some new channels in her existing server, specifically dedicated to illustrations of bestiality. While everything she'd done before hadn't quite alerted members of her community to her nature, this was sure to perk up some ears. Get it? because they're dogs. One of her moderators from the server decided to message her to see why she decided to create this channel. While she attempted to dodge the question initially, later on, she revealed a bit more about herself and how she really feels on the topics of zoophilia and bestiality. All right, I have one final question before we part ways. What did you mean when you said that you believed zoophiles were somewhat misunderstood due to the zoo sadism thing? Because of the horrible stuff that happened with zoo sadism, People conflate zoophiles with sadists and fetishists. She went on to proclaim herself as a therapist, basically trying to tie her view on the subject to that of someone who wants to help and understand others. In this case, those others would be dog fuckers. She then decides to send a link to the Zooier Than Thou podcast. This is a show where dog fuckers get together to talk about all things related to dog fucking and proudly speak about abusing animals. It is genuinely hours upon hours of some of the most delusional, and disgusting shit you can find online. It's a miracle to me that it's still on YouTube to this day. Although if I had to guess, not enough big YouTubers have screamed at them to delete the dog fucking podcast off their platform yet to truly care. And Zooier Than Now is not a little known name. While its subscriber and view count is relatively low, YouTuber Toad McKinley has covered the show and its hosts extensively in videos with hundreds of thousands of hits. Users on Kiwi Farms have extensively combed through material to dissect their identities and past. Among more, uh, 
normal furries online, the podcast is seen as yet another stain on their community, which reflects badly to the broader internet. It was at this point that this Discord mod, Matcha, cut ties with Sappho. Failing the need to speak out, he would pen a twit longer on the 8th of September, where he exposes her for supporting zoophilia and harboring a number of minors in her server, where illustrations and discussions of this subject are abundant. I was a mod of Sappho's Discord server, a public server to learn about hypnosis and hypnotism. The server is around three weeks old, and I became a mod due to a server drama where people were discussing the age limit of the server. A not safe for work chat was created, known as NSFW Feral. NSFW Feral was for feral pornography, which included drawn feral ex anthro and feral ex human. My views of feral aside, I was deeply uncomfortable with some of the material I saw which included a non-anthropomorphized dog raping a girl walking down the street in a non-consensual scenario, and a realistic drawing of a dog with its dick out. So I decided to leave the server. I wrote a letter of resignation and left. But something stuck with me. When the topic went to zoophiles, Sappho said something along the lines that zoophiles were misunderstood. I wanted clarification on this, so I reached out the night after everything had happened. To summarize the convo, she said she supports the zoophile community and that being attracted to animals or doing the act isn't wrong. Much of this account had been corroborated with DM evidence and there was no reason to believe that Masha was lying about any of this. Word of Sappho's misconduct once again spread within her own community and those adjacent. She had been caught with DM proof admitting that she was a supporter of zoophiles. She had even linked a podcast which was heralded by fellow zoos as one of their main sources of camaraderie. Once again, Sappho was at a crossroads. She could delete her entire internet presence and go into hiding, or dig her heels in even more on this disgusting shit and deal with the backlash. This brings us all the way back to coming out about things. Her September upload, where she describes in detail her view of the topic and defends zoophiles. As with many degenerates of this nature, she attempts to attach her own attraction to the LGBT movement, comparing her and fellow zoo enthusiasts to gay activists of years past. And it's a lot like when homosexuals were coming out in the 1960s and Stonewall and those sorts of events. And I know that 99% of my viewers, my community, you don't have anything wrong with homosexuals or gay people. You support them, you support LGBT, nothing against them. Zoophiles are among the most caring and loving people towards animals and their mates. We see animals as equals to humans, not as property or an object like in the eyes of the law and others. Much of this video attempts to emotionally manipulate the audience, asking for them to be understanding and not cast judgment on something that they just don't understand. When, of course, no rational human being would be able to have their minds changed on the subject of bestiality even one inch. It should go without saying that it's disgusting, and those who practice it should be, uh, well, not sure YouTube's terms of service would want me to give my thoughts on that one. Sappho attempts to draw a distinction between zoophiles and zoosadis. She claims that zoophiles are okay because they practice love and consent with animals, while zoo sadists, such as Kiro the wolf, are the true monsters. Zoophilia is often very misunderstood, especially because of certain very terrible people and what you may have seen in the news. And someone that I will not mention if you remember that situation with the zoo sadism leaks a few years back. Unfortunately, when people think of zoophiles, especially furries, that's the person that comes to mind. That is the situation that comes to mind. And I'm talking about horrible abuses. They're fetishists and bestialists. I do not want them to be the face of the community and they should not be the face of the community. Ethical zoos, are not like that. Specifically, I and other ethical zoos follow what's called Zeta principles. Zeta being the Greek symbol, but also standing for zoophiles engagement, for tolerance and acceptance. 
Judging from most of the comments, it didn't exactly work. I fear for the safety of that German Shepherd dog. The pain it feels inside is unimaginable. You're why people are scared of us furries. Please never relate this to the LGBT again. The first 13 minutes of this video are her outlining her thoughts, but past that point, it transitions to a conversation between Sappho and one of her friends, where they discuss how he regularly abuses his pet German Shepherd. You're my closest zoo friend and really helped me accept myself. In fact, you made a post on Zooville, um, and in that particular post, it was about you coming out about things, and you linked uh, an episode of the Zoo Year Than Now podcast about coming out, and that just really inspired me to make this video and to like go forward with being more open about it. I found this community and found the Zoo Year Than Now podcast. In this recording, the forum Zooville is mentioned. The address linked, zoofileforum.net, is exactly what you would expect given what we've seen so far. Post after post justifying zoophilia and sharing personal experiences. How old were you when you first mated with an animal? What is the cost of caring for your animal partners per year? How, ideally, would you want your female partner to dress for a zoo encounter in your presence? Page after page Page of revolting content posted by revolting people. Some of these people exclusively derive pleasure from encounters with animals. However, others, like the one interviewed in Sappho's video, believe that they are in love with dogs. The level of delusion is really hard to wrap your head around, and now there's an entire website for these people to hang out. It's so much easier to just be at a point where I'm okay. Absolutely. And I can look myself in the mirror and, and say it. You know, I'm a zoo, and mm -hmm. my partner is the love of my life, and, you know, we're, I love her romantically, physically, you know, that's, that is okay. And I think so, too. And, you know, it's, it's really amazing to hear how you overcame that struggle and came to that realization and came to accept yourself for who you are. It's just fucking sickening. This video really was the perfect concoction to outrage everyone. Sappho brings up older furry drama, necessarily tying it to the prior controversy in just one more installment of a never-ending string of incidents within the community. Furries that don't support this gross shit hated that it poorly reflected on all of them. Sappho bringing up the LGBT community and their progress angered them as well. And beyond that, at 37 minutes in length, there was plenty of content to be picked apart here. Commentary channels quickly picked up on the story and expressed their disgust for what they saw. I am a zoophile. I do not have a thing for humans. I am more attracted to dogs like German Shepherds. If you are willing to stay and listen to my view and deck- No. No. I'm not. I'm not. I don't think many of us are. We're not gonna stick around for your view. And you posted this on 9-11? Oh my god. This video is 36 minutes long. I don't have a ton of confidence that in 36 minutes, you're gonna say anything that makes anyone go, hey, you know what? You're right. It's totally fine. I myself even talked about this in a video on my other channel and expressed my general disgust with the opinions promoted in the video. The idea that someone would not only be attracted to animals, but actually be proud of it and feel like anyone should even be willing to entertain their ideas was shocking to say the least. Sappho had painted a target on her face, and in video after video, she was ripped apart. Mainstream attention was even attracted to the situation, with Input.com publishing an article about her detailing how she was using sites like Twitter and Discord to build a community of vulnerable people. The more urgent matter is the significant link between pedophilia and zoophilia. There seems to be a hidden group of animal sex abusers who are really child predators. Edwards' research found almost a third of bestiality arrests involved sexual abuse of children under 12. There's a high number of people who have sexual interest in both animals and children. In this context, the intense devotion of Sappho's teenage fanbase is disturbing. Countless zoophile profiles, tweets, and fan art from my who claim to be as young as 13 credit Sappho as an inspiration for their zoophilia. Many refer to Sappho as mommy, and some appear to have committed self-harm in her name. She's recently been accused of child grooming. While those who aren't deranged criticized her, 
Those frequenting Zooville and fellow Zoo podcasts saw it fit to embrace her as their greatest champion. Her Twitter account began growing a bit, where she would post tweets explaining how proud she is of coming out, and openly talked about specific dogs that she was attracted to. Tweet after tweet showed her proudly proclaiming her beliefs, and fellow zoos flocked to her account. While the negative attention had been, well, negative, she was now building a little cult from fellow dog fuckers that crawled out of the woodwork to talk about their feelings. Even as more and more severe allegations were made about her community, Sappho pushed on. She believed that individually, zoophiles were powerless, but with numbers, even over the internet, they could enact actual change. And she didn't just want to participate. Her citing of Stonewall riots, in which LGBT activists held a number of demonstrations in New York, was not merely emotional manipulation. One month after her coming out video, she made another upload announcing her new organization, Zeta North America. She billed this as a way to promote inclusivity and tolerance for zoos. Within this video, she specifically alludes to the existence of Kiwi Farms as well, and seems to take the all publicity is good publicity approach going as far as to smugly thank them for the notoriety they gave her. People trying to post an address and say that it's mine everywhere and that sort of thing. Uh, especially some really toxic forums, like some really fucking toxic forums that are trying to go after me. But I can't even be angry at those people because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I am right now. I mean, I have a very good community of people around me now. Meanwhile, she and her friends began posting promotional content on Twitter for her organization. This promised to be a new frontier for zoophiles. They would band together to show the world that they were not afraid of who they were, and, and you know what, they weren't so bad after all. Just some weird guys who like to be weird, and hey, don't we all like to be weird? No, uh, fuck off. However, the organization was very short-lived due to infighting with its members, as well as failure to officially file with the IRS as a tax-deductible agency. Just as it was announced, her dreams of some kind of zoophile rights organization fizzled out. But this minor setback didn't mean she couldn't continue building her audience and community. And that's bad enough on its own, but maybe we could at least, we could at least take a little solace in the fact that she had decided to kick all the kids out of her community, okay? It was adult dog fuckers only, instead of vulnerable kids being dragged in, that can be groomed by adults into thinking that it is okay to have sex with animals. But of course, it just has to get worse. One of the things specifically touched on in the Input article is the fact that Sappho has had a number of incidents where minors, one claiming to be as young as 13 years old, have been lured into her Discord servers and private chats, where she then tries to convince them that they are attracted to animals and that that's just fine. The thing is, Sappho specifically tries to attract both adults and younger internet users to her community. The easier they can be preyed upon, the more attractive they are to Sappho. In early December of 2021, Sappho came out to her followers on Twitter with a very emotional story. She claimed that a 13-year-old zoophile who she was friends with had taken her own life because she had been harassed by people online. Just yesterday, you apologized to me for bothering me, that you thought I was a cool person and that you liked my voice, and I didn't respond. There is a reason we are doing this, to stop the harassment and bullying that leads to this. Julia, rest well now. And here we have a screenshot of her sending a picture of an angel and supposedly sending a beyond the grave message to this deceased child. In the following days, she posted a number of other tweets mourning the loss of this young person's life at the hands of zoo haters. She also used this as an opportunity to, once again, justify her positions on bestiality and promote the idea of tolerance for her group of people. After looking into this a little further, it was discovered that Julia does actually exist and is a real person, but she's far from dead. Her TikTok account made a post saying that her parents had taken her phone away because they found some of the conversations she was having online, which, safe to assume, are not things any parent wants to find on their kid's phone. This made claims from Sappho that she would be attending the minor's funeral very weird. I mean, firstly, are we to believe that the parents of this child knew about her interactions with Sappho, and were totally fine with it before her death, and now, in the wake of her passing, had decided to invite the adult woman, encouraging their child to have sex with animals over Discord, to her funeral? Rest assured, she had an explanation. Sappho posits that the account was compromised by someone claiming to be her, some nefarious anti-zoophile hacker. Or maybe, better yet, 
The parents just lied about her being alive, and she did pass away, and they were now trying to cover it up or something? Given the lack of any information suggesting that this girl died, or that it had anything to do with cyberbullying some 13-year-old zoophile Twitter account, it was probably safe to say that she was full of shit. This would later be confirmed with posts from the minor where they said that they were totally okay, and even provided proof that they were who they said they were. Maybe this kid shouldn't be around their dog given the conversations they were having, but I digress. While it can't be completely confirmed, it's my opinion that Sappho intended to use the supposed death of this young girl as outrage bait. What better way to make it seem as if your enemies are detestable than to claim that their actions led to the death of a young girl? Whether she actually believed this minor had passed away or if she thought she was alive is unknown. Either way, she tried to use suicide as a way to manufacture outrage for people who are, rightfully, criticizing people who promote bestiality. It's not unexpected, but it gives further insight into the length of her manipulation. And of course, Julia is far from the only minor Sappho had been regularly interacting with. Another TikTok user by the name of Serval had been seen in her TikToks interacting within VR chat, promoting her messages. If this person's age is to be believed, then Sappho is regularly interacting with 14-year-olds on a daily basis. With so many interactions between Sappho and minors publicly, especially considering the actual content she was promoting, one could only wonder how bad it got behind the scenes. After much discussion around the topic, she eventually also revealed her, shall we say, atypical view of relationships with minors. And even pushing it aside of, well, go ahead and do research and see what is safe or what's not. A child still does not have the mental capacity to go through with sex um, safely. Um, okay, so that, that very last part I, I disagree with, but, um... One thing you'll notice about Sappho is that she likes to talk. A lot. Eventually, she tends to talk herself around to admitting to being some other form of reprehensible. One term you may have heard floating around in YouTube videos and on Twitter is MAP. I'm the MAP. I'm the MAP. I'm the MAP. Short for minor attracted person. This term is an attempt for pedophiles to rebrand themselves to be more socially acceptable. Many of those self-identifying promote contact with minors and have, much like Sappho, tried to tie themselves to the LGBT movement. Sappho posted a long thread on the topic of maps, questioning the validity of age of consent laws around the world. She ends by saying, I am attracted to some minors, but minors specifically? No. In fact, my most recent partners were significantly older. I do not know if I would call myself a map. If so, then it's more like layers of an onion than a yes or no. I am mostly just a loving, guiding, nurturing motherly figure. She posted a later tweet promoting what she calls critical thinking on the topic. Sappho had always been lewd and very explicit, but much of these conversations had been relegated to direct messages prior to this. With so much attention building, perhaps she felt she had nothing to lose from making it more public. So, she decided to make an alternate Twitter account just for sharing extremely graphic drawings of animals. At this time, it was also discovered that she had an affinity for what is known as cub material, depictions of specifically young-looking animals, being puppies in her case, in suggestive and explicit situations. She began posting and retweeting this content onto her own Twitter account, which was public and had been promoted by her main. Many of her followers on both were minors. Combined with what she was actually retweeting onto their timelines, this was heavily criticized by her detractors. While it was obvious what she was doing, she dishonestly played it off by misrepresenting the situation, as always. She got even more hate for the deflection, but for the time at least, she didn't seem to care. With so many people talking about her irresponsible interactions with her young community, and the fact that she had clearly taken measures to specifically attract these people to her, not to mention her expressed open-mindedness to map acceptance, what happens next is something you could probably have seen coming. She's a pedophile. <laughs> Her promotion of map activity and supporting of child grooming caused her account to be mass reported by Twitter users, and she was permanently suspended on the site. She had been officially deplatformed on Twitter, and while her YouTube channel did exist, it had become inactive for some time since she hid the Zeta organization announcements. It's been a wild ride so far, so I encourage you all to catch your breath for a moment. Maybe get a drink of water, go to the bathroom, take a shower to wash off all of the scum that your body has collected since being exposed to this information. It's only getting worse.
Having been kicked from one of her primary avenues of attracting new members to her posse, she collaborated with a few friends to create her own little community hub via Mastodon, an open source social networking app that kind of functions as a bunch of smaller, isolated Twitters. Her own community is invite only, so she can carefully curate who enters. Despite this barrier, plenty of interactions were leaked, painting a picture of her most deplorable community yet. Here, she once again talked about her less than digestible views on sex with minors, and felt more free to talk about dog Fucking. It's no surprise by now that she's willing to admit her genuine thoughts on these topics, but it doesn't make the fact that she was caught talking to another minor any more easy to hear. Many had taken note that Sappho, who was once again 21 years of age, had been strangely close and affectionate publicly with a 16-year-old in her community named Kylo. The two were very flirtatious in tweets and even made suggestions at lewd content behind the scenes. As it turned out, behind the scenes, the two were dating and engaging in more of this furry VR roleplay and, like, hypnosis kink kink play. I fucking hate that these are these are strings of words that exist and describe real things. At the same time of her confession to being a map, Sappho and Kylo added Taken to their Twitter bios. Many speculated that the two were in a relationship, and DMs from the time even showed the minor in question, stating that they wanted to keep the relationship a secret and clearly admitting to it. The minor even expressed worry at the time that they would be discovered by their parents while also thanking Sappho for buying him a pizza. I wonder if it was cheese. Sappho attempted to hide the relationship publicly, despite clear indication that they were dating by devising a lie. She would announce that she was dating another member of her community instead. That way, people would hopefully be thrown off the scent. Why she thought that this would actually work is anyone's guess. Less than 24 hours later, Kylo confessed publicly that the two were in a relationship. Kylo then released a number of direct messages between the two, which substantiated a few allegations. That the two had exchanged explicit images of each other, and that Sappho had been having conversations with another fan of theirs. This one was 13 years old. Following this, Sappho accused Kylo of backstabbing them and said that she had fallen in love with the wrong person. Message after message came out of her inappropriate interactions with minors, which were subsequently archived on Kiwi Farms. Hypnotist Sappho claimed to be going to a psych ward, and stated that she would be there for some time. If true, at least she would be away from a computer or a phone where she could continue to spread her disgusting ideas and engage in these conversations at length. But, given the fact that she has shown herself to be a pathological liar, it really is a coin toss if this is true or not. In the fallout, Sappho was also partially doxxed when her Facebook page was discovered. However, those who leaked the information decided to censor essential details, meaning it may be hard to report her activity to the proper authorities. Sappho was in the military, and it's been claimed by some users that information about her wrongdoings reached back to another Air Force member, who reported it to her superiors. Supposedly, a court-martialing could take place, but for now, this is unverified. Looking back, it's kind of funny that at one point, Sappho actually loved the attention she was getting. She would often mock her detractors, posting what she saw as gotchas on Twitter. She even made a video where she made fun of those who criticized her and called her out and are disgusted by her, referring to them as haters over some dubstep. I hope at this point, it's hardly fun. With nowhere left to run and no foe position to hide behind, Sappho and her community now have to come to terms with her nature. In Sappho's initial coming out video, she referenced Kiro the Wolf, another furry who was outed as a straight up evil individual and built a community in his image. She tried to draw a distinction between her and him, and claimed that she was not bad, while he and Zeusatis are actually the bad ones. Hopefully, all of this has shown that she is just as depraved in her own special way. I've been Turkey Tom, and until next time, leave me alone.